Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.11, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 15, Maverick F model. The AGM-65F is one of two versions of the Maverick that the Hornet can carry, the other one being the AGM-65E. Uh, the E model is a laser Maverick, and the F model that we're carrying here is an infrared guided version of the missile with its own sensor. Now the, there are a couple of different ways of employing the missile. Uh, the main one would be to have it automatically slew to your current target point and that target point could be provided by your radar, your targeting pod, waypoint designate or any other mechanism by which your aircraft can create a target point. The other mechanism is that you can actually use the infrared sensor of the missile itself to look for and lock a target. The missile will lock onto anything that provides a heat contrast, um, so it's, it's looking for you know, hot infrared signatures. Although it does have a, a black uh, track mode where it will look for the coldest item underneath your cursor, so I've not tested that too much. Let's uh, jump inside the cockpit and get set up in order to employ the missile. If we look at the store's management page here, we can see that I'm carrying four of the Mav Fs. That's the, the weapons profile that the F uh, Maverick shows up as. This is actually the maximum number. We can carry them singly on each of the wing pylons. I'm also carrying the AT Fleur targeting pod and one AMRAM, and I'm also carrying 578 rounds of gun ammo. If we go ahead and select the Maverick weapon profile just now, it initially has a cross through it. Now normally that's going to be because uh, the, the Maverick hasn't cooled yet, but uh, this is a hot start and so the, the missile has already been pre-cooled. But just be aware that normally when you first select it, if you've done a start from the ground, you will need to wait three minutes uh, in order for the, the missile to be usable. If we go into air to ground mode and turn on master arm, we can see that all four missiles are in standby. And if I hit the profile again for Mav F, it will give us uh, the seeker head video. If it hadn't cooled yet, it would actually show the timer here, allowing us to track how long it will be until the missile is ready. Alternatively, we can go menu, and we have IMAV display here at the top right. Either of those methods will give you the, the seeker video. Now we've got some options around the outside of the display. Down the left hand side, we can adjust the fuse, by default, it will be an instantaneous detonation, although we have options for delay one and delay two. These will be used against hardened structures that you need to penetrate. We're gonna leave it in instantaneous mode. We also have an option here for ship mode. In ship mode, the locking cursor will expand and allow you to lock a much larger than usual target, such as a ship. We then have the white track and black track modes. This simply controls whether or not you're trying to lock a warm or a cold target. Um, we, no, almost always you're going to run it in the, in the white-hot track mode. Step will allow you to step through the missiles that you've got, and FOV allows you to change the FOV of the missile. Uh, at the top left it confirms the station you're about to fire, and its status, whether it's caged or uncaged. Let's uh, go ahead and select waypoint 1 and waypoint designate it, and I'm now going to create a target point that I can then slew the missile to. So let's go menu and flare. We've now got a nice view here of the target area. Uh, let's switch this to infrared just to make our lives a little bit easier. Let's set the field of view down. Uh, I'm going to press sensor select switch to the right. I've now got the diamond confirming that this is the display I'm now controlling. I'm going to press nose wheel steering and I'm going to go for the rightmost target here. If I go um, depress on the TDC, I've now locked that target and I have arranged the target 8.9 miles. That's just within the maximum range of the Maverick. It's actually, it, it, book figure, it's supposed to be 13 nautical miles, but my experience is that you can never get them to fire off at that kind of range. So it's now telling us uh, it's 11 uh, seconds time to maximum range. Let's um, take it out of active pause and let's get a little bit closer. And then what I'm going to do is press sensor select switch to the left to bring up the Maverick display and it will then slew. There we go, in range. I press sensor select switch to the left. It slews down. I'm going to FOV. No, the FOV is not working. I've had this before. For some reason the FOV doesn't always work and I don't know why. Let's lock up a target. 
got to be careful with the clouds because it will impair the missile's ability to lock. Okay, it's ready and locked. Pickle. Missile's away. And let's just observe what it does here. Make sure that we get a hit with it. Did I actually manage to lock a target? It looks like I did. Boom! That was, in fact, the vehicle I was trying to destroy. Perfect. And the others are scattering. And immediately you get the next missile. So that's the, the video feed from the next missile showing up now. Um, other thing to note, up on the HUD, it will always show you the status of the Maverick. So Mav F with a cross through it confirms that currently, it, you know, the currently selected missile does not have a lock. Uh, and uh, you'll, the cross will disappear once you do lock something up. Other thing to note is this triangle here is the field of view of the missile. So if I, if I want to lock something up just using the seeker head, I could put the triangle over a target and uh, then depress my TDC and slew it and so on. That's actually what I'm going to demonstrate now. One thing I'm going to warn you ahead of time is that this is actually a very difficult thing to do, uh, but we're going to give it a go. So in most cases, you're going to want to employ the missile with a pre-existing target location as opposed to trying to slew the seeker head around but let's give it a go in any case okay where's the target area here we go eyes on the target area so i'm going to put the triangle in the rough area that i want and I'm going to start slewing. Okay, so now it's no longer locked to my flight path. I'm going to FOV in. I've got a target. Depressing. Come on, lock up. Pickle. Okay, that was very close. I'll be surprised if that actually hits, but let's give it a go. And I'm being fired on. And it actually did hit. Fantastic. Those guys were taking some pot shots at me. Hopefully they didn't get me. But yes, th those are two of the main ways of employing the missile. Of course, just using the Seeker head is very, very difficult. Uh, and in fact, you actually, there is the possibility to use the Seeker video just as a kind of lo-fi targeting pod. But I wouldn't really recommend that. That's a very 1980s thing to do with it. Um, it's much, much easier to automatically slew the missile to a pre-existing target point. And as I said, you can create those using the targeting pod, the radar, uh, waypoint designate or really any mechanism that you have uh, available to you. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, that was the, the basics of employing the AGM-65F Infrared Maverick. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like and comment and I'll see you all next time.